This is Locked On Chiefs on your first pseudo Red Friday because pseudo because it is the preseason. The 49ers are the opponent. Andy has a plan. We're going to go over that. We're going to talk about what we need to see from the offense and from that defense to make sure that this game does something for this team and moving forward towards the regular season. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network and we are happy you are here with us. Let's get after it. This is Locked On Chiefs. It's the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. From the land of the free and the home of the Chiefs, this is the Locked On Chiefs podcast. Hello, hello. It is Red Friday. I I know you're saying pseudo, but I'm going to call it Red Friday. There's a game, so that's all that really matters to me when it comes to Red Friday. Fair enough. Yeah, that that counts. (laughs) We get to watch football. Finally, like, like as we're getting ready to record this, there's already been one game, the Hall of Fame game. And I just have to say, I'm thankful that I'm not a Cowboys fan for multiple reasons. But yeah, that whole Dak Prescott issue. Good luck. Yeah, it's a tough one. I didn't think he was going to have problems with the shoulder yet. But hey, it is what well, it is. And I love that the team came out and said, you know, he's just wanting to get a second opinion. I'm like, uh, anytime a team wants to say that. Yeah, good luck with that one. Rut row. Things, things you're thankful for, Patrick Mahomes, part 742. Um, oh, and by the way, I do want to mention there was a great tweet yesterday. If you could go back, and I'll ask you this question real quick, and then we'll get into camp. If you could go back, past or present, and key for me is present, um, is there any player that you would like to see that would never have been injured or never would get injured to play Ooh, for their entire the, career? Who are the Iron Men? Um, I mean, Waters didn't get injured much, did he? Nope. Will, Will Shields didn't miss many games. Maybe a few. Willie, a few. My my mind drifts automatically to the offensive line, but, you know, um, would we bring DT back in a heartbeat? Yeah, but that wasn't really a, yeah. a specific football injury. But, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Uh, for me, it's easy. Mahomes. Oh, okay. Past or present. Oh, you said present. Yeah, sorry. I immediately drifted backwards. No, and I get it. I think everybody did because everybody was talking Jamal Charles and Eric Berry and all this, and I'm just sitting there going, present, Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, like like Patrick on a 10-step drop. I'm just drifting out the back of the end zone there. Yeah, if you you can have him healthy for the next 15 years, no injuries, yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, why wouldn't you? And healthy is the key word, right? And part of of what goes into that is – what Andy tried to say a couple of days ago was not a change, but then he confirmed what his plan is for reps in this first preseason game. That is a little bit of a change, not necessarily for the starters. Uh, he did say starters are going to get quarter one, period. Yep. But he went on to say that the twos get the second quarter, the threes get the third, and the fours get the fourth. That's a little bit of a change because that has always been, right. uh, you know, in and out, back and forth the rest of the game. And I wonder if that means because even today we saw guys like Trey Smith, uh, like Creed Humphrey taking some reps with the supposed twos. So maybe there's some overlap there and they get a little bit more work. Yeah. And Jeff Schwartz actually pointed out on Twitter, he thinks that it's possible that that the offensive line will get more work into the second quarter because they're so young. Yeah. And I think that that would make a lot of sense. I know people will get pissed off if there's injuries, but honestly, there's injuries in any game. So um, it's a risk you're going to take and you just have to deal with it. Personally, I think that it would make a lot of sense for those guys to play more. Yeah. Uh, get them reps, get them time with uh, just together. I, and honestly, that's the big thing for me. Get those guys time together. And honestly, I would add Niang to that because another thing that happened today is Rimmer's return to practice, but uh, but he was second string. mm -hmm. Niang held on to first. And I wonder if that'll flip eventually, but it makes a lot of sense going into this game if Rimmer's is just coming back from injury for him to be the second team. I was just going to say that. You know, it is what it is. Niang's been taking so many snaps lately. Throw in Rimmer's in there for a preseason game that he probably doesn't need. It isn't going to help him improve. Uh, I think you just want to run with that. He did cycle in from what I saw, so it wasn't 100% of the, the one snaps right. for Niang, but I think that that's just fine. I it, think it's the thing you talked about before. It's, it's avoiding injury while balancing that with getting experience for the rookies. What I have to ask you, though, is I saw your tweet about Justin Herbert. Ah, Yeah, um, I have to agree with you. Second-year quarterback, there's no way he'd be sitting the entire preseason. 
I mean, and, and you guys know how strongly I feel about Herbert and his future and what he will eventually become. He's not going to get there if you don't let him practice. That leads to, I mean, this season, unlike last season when he got to start against the Chiefs, you expect him to start. So he's got to get warmed up. At the same time, I will say this, and I didn't put this on, on social media. Um, their decision was both Herbert and Derwin James are not going to play in the preseason at all. I kind of agree with the Derwin James part. I do too, considering how much he's been hurt. Yeah, I absolutely do. I think that uh, if he hadn't been hurt the past couple of years, then maybe. But he's continually he dealt with injury. So to me, it makes a lot of sense that they're doing that. But yeah. for the Herbert thing, I'm just sitting here going, new offensive scheme, new offense. I mean, yeah, I just I don't think I'd go that direction. This, this is just another thing. And, and this should go to Bobby Stroop as, as well. This is another advantage that you just don't think about, another reason to covet what – Patrick Mahomes is he did have offseason surgery Herbert did not and he's still right. out there and he's still going to get the work and I think that's important it's it's a challenge for certain but got to have some work um and you know we need to get into what we're looking for that work to produce in this particular game so that they get momentum moving forward we'll do that after we talk about some of our pals our pals at Bill Bar, and they are our pals at Bill Bar because they send us stuff all the time, and we appreciate that. And yeah, Ryan's going to show his. I'll show mine. Uh, and I also actually ju just got an email from them today saying that they're bringing back coconut almond and peanut butter brownie, I believe. Uh, so watch out for those flavors. They are coming back to Bill Bar uh, for a limited time. Did you know that Bill Bar has so many delicious flavors? I already talked about two new ones that they're bringing back for a limited time. They also have coconut, cherry barcia, raspberry, mint brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel, strawberry, orange, cookies and cream, and German chocolate. My favorite flavor of those is double chocolate right now. It is absolutely delicious. If you haven't tried all the flavors, you can get a mixed box where you get two of each of the nine flavors. Not only are Bill Bar flavors the best tasting, but they are healthy too. 17 to 82 grams of protein, calories ranging from 130 to 180 calories and only four to five grams of sugar and four to five grams of net carbs. Amazing flavors, all tasty, all healthy, all absolutely delicious. Order today and get the grasshopper cookie or raspberry or whatever you like. Built Bar was the official protein bar of the U.S. track and field team. Go to built.com and use promo code LOCK15 and you'll get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. And please do support Bilt Bar. Um, they did something very cool. I just wanted to throw this out there real quick. They are engaging not in individual naming license agreements, but with the entire roster at BYU. So those walk-ons that don't have a scholarship are going to have their tuition paid through these NILs that Bilt is giving them just to play for BYU. I think that is super cool. And is 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 nearly boosterish in its its broad appeal to the walk on crowd. No, absolutely. And I think it's a phenomenal thing for them to do, and it just shows you what kind of company they are. And honestly, I've ordered a couple times from them, and I still get you know I still get emails. How did you feel? How was everything? It wasn't. And honestly, I don't think that they know that I'm a host for Locked On and that I talk about their product all the time. That's just their customer service. I think they are a fantastic brand. So thank you, Bill Bar, for what you do, and thank you for your products. They are absolutely delicious. And the other delicious thing is how much this offense is going to eat, I think. Nothing against the Niners defense, but Man, I, I hope so. They ain't ready. I mean, let's be real. I know Fred's out there and but, let's see how Bosa feels, but yeah, um, but Andy's gonna be vanilla. So are they gonna eat that much? I mean, I, I think that this offense is better than their defense. Don't get me wrong. I agree with you on that. My question is, is how vanilla is Andy going to be? What is he going to allow Mahomes to do? And honestly, what we've seen in the past, and I expect to see again in this game, what game, what type of game plan is this? Especially now, because in the past, they've had three games to work on, and it sounds like they're still going to have three games to work on. So is this going to be the running game? Is this going to be the passing game? Which is it going to be for the offense? I, I'm excited because, like you said, vanilla is what Andy does, especially in, in preseason one. But that means that the new wrinkles that are pretty vanilla means can you run your new power runs consistently? Can you keep the quarterback clean, simple dropbacks, nothing super long, no reason to, if there is a breakdown, allow Patrick to be hit. Are they going to do those types of runs, though? I think they have to. I, I expect to see quite a bit of that. And if they want to make progress towards the regular season, they have to run the ball okay. a lot this first week. 
And I don't disagree with you. I, I just wonder how much they're going to pull out of the hat. I mean, obviously different traps are, are traps and, you know, defensive linemen are going to know what's coming. The defense is going to know what's coming. It's how you execute. So you absolutely have to practice it. And I agree with you there. I just wonder how much they're going to show because to me, I agree. I think that they will have some different things that they haven't had in the past. And I think that Andy would want to hold on to those for the first couple of games, but uh, they do have to practice it. So, yeah, you, you got to have it in, in the playbook. And quite frankly, with a group of five linemen that haven't played together yet, I think the more the merrier, like get it in now and you can back it off like by game three when you know you want to run an offense that more resembles your regular season offense where you're not going to have time to dedicate to the run game that much. So, yep. you know, for me, this might be my favorite preseason game in the whole thing. So, <laughs> You and your running game. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> shock me. So expect a lot of from Michael Burton is what you're basically saying. Uh, and I honestly, I mean, that definitely could be the case. They could go with this being their running game. Uh, mm -hmm. But I do believe that they are going to have a, a running type offense one week and a passing type offense the next. I just don't know which one it's going to be. Well, the interesting thing to me, and, and we talked about in the last segment, um, that Andy's changing his plan in, in giving the strings each a quarter. I think that's important because I think that's an adaptation to not having the fourth game. Because I don't know that you would ever dedicate time to the fourth in, right. in the past. So that is a change, and I think that's going to be key too. But you're for not me, four, you're not four deep at all positions, so that's also going to be something you have to, to play into. And honestly, that's my question: is okay. Well, so if you're only three deep at a position, I would guess that the guy that's second string is going to play a lot longer into the third quarter, and then the third string guy is going to come in, and then he's going to play third and fourth. Yeah, and that's how you're going to do it because you don't want to have, unless it's an offensive lineman named Niang or Humphrey or Smith, mm -hmm. I think that you're probably going to want your starters out after the first quarter. And honestly, I could see where they could go with those three and play them a little bit more just so they get time together. Yeah. Well, I think it also tell you an, a better idea, unlike the unofficial depth chart that, that comes from PR rather than the coaching staff, this is going to give us a better feel for how they feel about who is where. Absolutely. Interesting, two interesting things to me in Andy's presser today. Uh, he referred to Darwin Thompson as uh, the termite. So he's going to be out there quite a bit from what he said. <laughs> uh, and, and as he was talking about this, I don't know if this, you can't read everything into this. Sometimes we make too much of small comments at pressers, but uh, I did find it that it was telling when asked about the tight end competition that he named, obviously Kelsey will go with the ones and then Noah and Jody will be working. Didn't mention Blake Bell at all. So if we don't see Blake Bell until the fourth, that tells you something about yeah. where Jody Fortson is in this battle. Yeah, and honestly, with the catches he's been making in camp, I think that they're looking at it and saying, we just can't risk it at this point. Mm -hmm. If he's going to make comment, and I know we've been high on Fortson for a while, yeah. and he hasn't, it hasn't panned out so far, but if he's making the catches, because I hear about it almost every day that he makes some insane catch mm -hmm. from some different person, or I mean, it could be Henny, it could be Mahomes, uh, it, you know, who knows, but the big thing there is, okay, if he's making those catches on a daily basis, if they're seeing that they're going to expect that they're going to see that in games, if they see it in games and if Reed, what Reed said, I didn't even hear that. So thank you for pointing out. If, if Reed said something like that, that to me tells me that they already think that there's no way that they can cut him because okay. they're not going to mention something like that and then cut him three weeks later, expecting to get him on the practice squad. It's, it's leaning that way, I would say. Um, everything changes at the first preseason game. That's why you guys will see me at camp next week because there will be guys that get demoted and guys that get promoted off of this game film alone. So that's we got to keep that in mind. But I, I expect that this is going to give us some clarity at the tight end spot. I also expect that they have to get some clarity about who is competing for the roster at the wide receiver spot. There's so many of them. When we get past the initial six – into the late second quarter, certainly who starts the second half is going to be telling to me about where they see progress in that position group. No, and I agree with you on that. I do wonder if those wide receivers are going to be, you know, where you're going to find them the most and where it's going to be most important is who's going to play special teams because mm -hmm. that's always a key going into these preseason games as well. So I do think that that's something to watch. Who is on the first string units for kickoff, extra point, punt, punt cover, uh, you know, all those different special teams, the four core special teams, who plays on those units? Yeah. 
if Fortson's on the, all four of those units, that's just another feather in his cap, and that says a lot about his chances of making the roster. And that would probably mean that our predictions that we made just yesterday are already wrong. Yeah, well, it happens. I'm not pretty 100%. much. Yeah, well, if I was 100%, I would be putting bets down. Oh, wait, I can do that at betonline.ag. <laughs> it's okay, it's easy. You can bet props, you can bet games, you can bet preseason, anything you want. There's all kinds of stuff. Make sure you get over there, even if it's another sport that I won't care to talk about. Um, all you got to do is get out there before the game starts, check out the contest information, all the sign up bonuses, get everything that you need at betonline.ag so that you can get off the sidelines and into the action with your bets. If you go there, make sure you use the promo code locked on. That will get you a 50% bonus deposit on top of what you put in there. You get half of it right from them themselves. It's, it's great. It's easy. And I think you guys are going to enjoy it. Check out betonline.ag, your online sportsbook experts. Now the defensive side of the ball, all this hype about what Chris Jones has been doing is great. I expect to see him for about three series is all. Honestly, that's going to be an exciting series to watch. Chris Jones versus Trent Williams. Because mm -hmm. uh, how close was Trent Williams to being a chief? Right. So that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I wonder how that's going to end up. Uh, and honestly, the one thing we didn't mention that we probably should have, Frank Clark left practice with an injury, a hamstring tweak. Yeah. He may not even play. Yeah. So if he doesn't play, who's the guy that takes his snaps? Dana. Well, I would think, but I mean, that's something to watch. I, I am very curious as to who they use in that regard. Yeah. Um, Kando's back out of practice. So you're going to see him at some point. Taco's got to do something. Of, yep. of the things that we have to see, I have to see Taco Charlton be a gamer and step up, even though it's preseason. Because right now, he's being buried by other guys that are making progress, and I need to see it out of him. I'm hopeful. <laughs> Well, I, I'm hopeful as well because if they don't get it from Taco Charlton, they're going to be in a bad spot this season. Uh, they just don't have the de the defensive end depth to be able to not have at least three guys from the defensive end group get after the passer. And honestly, I'm I can't I don't feel great about relying on Charlton, but I definitely don't feel great about trying to rely on Okafor either. So, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe you get one guy out of those two guys, but. Frank Clark hasn't been as good as you would hope he could have been over the past couple of seasons. So you hope he can take a step forward. And Chris Jones is just a beast. I think he's going to destroy people this year. I really do think he's in for a fantastic season. Uh, but you still have to have somebody across from him. And if Clark can't go for any reason, uh, we haven't even talked about his legal issues. Right. Who's going to be the other guy? Yeah. Because I don't think you want Dana out there full time. I, I like Dana, but I don't think he's ready for that yet. And Kando definitely isn't going to be ready for that yet. Right. I, I agree with you completely. So that, that leaves Taco. You need Taco. If not, yep. I, I mean, it'll be very telling, folks, in the third quarter, watch who's at that spot. Is it Tim Ward? Is it Damone Harris? Is it Kando out there for a long quarter? We'll see there. But that still doesn't correct the problem that you have Frank with a hamstring. You have Oak for with a hamstring. He won't play. He, he wasn't even on the field for a full practice today. So there's no way that he's going to be out there. That leaves a lot of question marks. And if Taco does not start making some progress right now, then they have to be looking on the discard pile from other teams, maybe well, even a trade. Yeah, and absolutely I agree with that. I think that they're in a position right now where if Frank Clark doesn't play, which is likely, if Okafor doesn't play, which is likely, then you're sitting there at Jones, Dana, and Kane or Jones, Dana, and Kando and Charlton. And who are those going to be? Who, how are you going to get through four quarters with those guys? You don't want Jones playing past, honestly, probably the first two series, right. uh, especially with all the other injuries at that position. I don't think you would want him out there. Uh, and then you're also in a situation where, okay, so if Jones comes out, then you have Dana and Kando and Charlton. Who's going to be the next guy to sit? Because, yeah, obviously you can have Ward and Harris play later, but you're still going to be running out of bodies just because you already have two of your top, what, three guys or four guys down already? Right. There's not a whole lot of defensive linemen to go around, but I think you're going to see Tershawn Wharton get some work there. Um, and Good. if they get if they get down to it and they're like, ah, who needs some snaps? Don't be surprised if you see Colin out Saunders out there at end. That will not surprise me in the least. Won't surprise me either. But and he's had a good couple of, of days from what I've heard. So, yeah, uh, that, that's a positive for him. 
Yeah, I'm really happy for that too. I want to see him carry that over against an opponent as well. Let's make sure of that. But the other big thing that I think has to happen is we have to see Nick Bolton run this defense. Starting second quarter would be my guess. Maybe with Hitch, maybe they get him out a little bit earlier than that. But he's got to be the guy in calling the play in the huddle. That's what we have to see from him. And if we see alignment issues, if we see guys breaking down on assignments, that means that there's still work to do in terms of Nick working into that role as Hitch's backup. Right. And, you know, the other big question at linebacker is, is Willie Gay going to play? He was on the field today with the twos from what I read. So it's possible he plays. Honestly, I think that this is a situation where you would want him to play. Uh, not necessarily coming from the concussion, and I get that. So maybe they hold him out because of it. But this is definitely a situation you'd want him to play in because he didn't get any preseason games last year. So no real practice that would have helped him to get ready for this. And now he's in a situation where he's going to be a starter and maybe not be able to play this week. Yeah, I, I personally, with the concussion, I would keep him out. And that's what I expect to happen. Yeah. I, I, there's no reason to risk it. it. It is They are valuable reps, particularly for him, but they're not as valuable if you would have to miss time if you get dinged up again. You get a second one, they stack up in terms of time it takes to heal, so I'd be very cautious with Willie Gay. Um, on the back, I, I don't know if there's anything we have to see. I think we know who the, the players are going to be that are going to be the front line for this secondary, but I do want to see someone step out and take the ball away. I'm looking you, for playmakers. Do you think you know? I don't know that I know. I think I've. I think we have ideas, but I'm really curious. At, well, okay, that's fair. I, I'm not sure I know because I think that they've been rotating so much. You would think that who knows who's going to be. I'm just curious because I do think that it really does matter who comes out when, who plays when. Obviously, Snead's going to start. You'd expect Ward to be the other starter. Where do they go from there? And does I would think so, but is it Fitton? Is it Hughes? Is it Baker? I mean, where are they going to go? Hughes has been playing better lately, from what we're hearing. Could could he jump Fenton in in the rotation? Could be for the first preseason game. Yep. And I'm not saying he's going to be a starter long term, but right. that's the key. Is Hughes obviously has a ton of talent. It's the question of whether or not he's ready to play in this defense and he's ready to contribute in this defense. And if they feel like he can, it wouldn't shock me if he's a starter. Yeah. Or you know, it's one of the top three corners. Yeah. We could certainly see that. I, I again, but I, it comes down to me is how do you differentiate? How are you going to help this team in the regular season? It's going to be by taking the ball away. They need to come Agreed. up with more actual turnovers. They 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 produce well at PBUs. They're not taking the ball away enough the last couple of seasons. Even Tyron will tell you that. Uh, they need to do that more, and, I, and that's what I'll be watching for, number one, first and foremost. So. Well, in the second the second team, you would think would have a pretty good chance of being able to do that, um, mainly because Trey Lance is going to be starting his first NFL game. So I do, th- or not starting, but he's going to be playing his first NFL game. So I do think that that should give them the opportunity to be able to maybe take a, the ball away once or twice. Uh, we'll have to see. I I think Lance is going to play, and I think he's going to play well. But it's, I expect that there's going to be a pick. I mean, this is the time to throw picks, honestly. Yeah, absolutely you got to learn and you know, your own guys, you don't know any of the other teams right now. And if Trey Lance ends up with a plus ratio touchdowns to, to interceptions, it's one step closer to starting the regular season, which I think by right. week four, he will be San Francisco's starter. Yeah. So I think that it's important for him to take chances and see what he can get away with. Yeah. Cause I think the games don't matter right now. Yeah. So take who are you expecting? You who are you expecting to start from Sorensen or, Thornhill, are you thinking it's going to be Sorensen? I think it will be for now, yeah. yeah. I think they're still being pretty cautious with Juan. Uh, it looks like his hesitation is fading from everyone that I talked to that I, I trust their eyes. Um, but I don't think they're in any eager way to push it with him. So let the, Dan start, especially in a preseason game that's meaningless. Yeah. No, no big deal. I want to see Key on the field, though. I want to see how early he gets in. Yeah. I, I'm I excited exactly. to see him play. He plays second quarter. And it'll it'll get and come back to it. Can you can you force a play? Is your tackling better than it was in college? That, those are the two things I'll be watching with Devin Key. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun to see. And folks, we'll give you a breakdown at some point as well. We have something special for you on Trey Smith coming up this weekend. So even though we're a five day a week show, I know you guys know that, but we're gonna have some bonus stuff for you as well. So uh, I hope that you enjoy this game. It's just the first of many, but it's gonna be a fun time. Thank the- you for subbing and all that. Go ahead. I was just going to say, please subscribe on YouTube and 
like on YouTube and comment on YouTube. We really do appreciate that. And uh, thank you so much for the growth that we've had there. Go check us out on YouTube. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we're trying to get to all the comments that we get, but it's there's a lot of them. So we're working on it. And if you're hearing or seeing this because you're frustrated with Apple, who is slow in posting episodes again, check out Spotify if you're an audio person or come over here to the YouTube thing. We are going to be on every platform all the time, whether it takes Apple six days or six minutes. So uh, we appreciate your patience with that part of it. Thank you for watching and listening today. And uh, we'll have something for you pre-game. Have a good one.